The Bitcoin halving is coming up and we need to see money supply grow in order for Bitcoin to grow itself. Guys, welcome back to the Crypto Bliss Show. I'm Kiara Dukas. Thank you for being here with me today. And I really do appreciate every single last one. Last one of you beautiful beings. Sorry about something other playing on my other computer. Um, but anyways, so I have an incredible time uh, in Cape Town. I was in Cape Town with my family. I absolutely loved it. It was amazing. I got to spend 10, nine days with them. Um, I got to see my niece. It was absolutely incredible and very, 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 very beautiful. And as you can see, I'm revived, refreshed, and channeled down the focus line with you guys. So let's get straight back into this. I did do videos for you guys during the times, but it was very difficult for me to do as many as I normally do because I'm not in my own environment, of course. Um, but I did what I could do for you guys. So, anyways, let's not waste any more. No, let's not waste any time. Let's get straight into the news because we have big, big, big news coming out this week that is going to affect us for next week. And that will be making the decision as to what you need to do going forward. Now, first of all, the cryptocurrency market cap is sitting at $1073 uh, trillion. We've had $27 tr uh, billion in trading volume. And this is the craziest thing, guys, is that if you think that Bitcoin isn't doing well, then you need to be very, very conscious about how the trading volume is working. So Bitcoin's trading volume was eight billion dollars in the last 24 hours okay eight billion dollars is at least 40 percent of the uh, about 33 percent of this number here which is insane and then ethereum makes up for seven billion dollars which would basically take up more than 60 percent of that total trading volume here on this market cap tether another 14 uh, 14 billion as you guys can see there so with those three those three and usdc coin they are literally eating up most of the trading volume in the market cap here. Now, guys, Bitcoin is sitting at 25,800, Ethereum at 1611, XRP at 48 cents, Dogecoin at 6.1, and Cardano at 25 cents, Solana at 18, uh, $18.90. And there is a lot of information saying to us that Solana is about to drop and fall off the face of the earth. But I'd like to just take you through a few things and let's see what goes. Uh, what you decide for yourself, of course. So you can see here, last week, 40, fear yesterday, 40, today, 40. It's sitting at 40, guys. We're in a state of fear. And remember, when you're in a state of fear, uh, or the market's in a state of fear, that's when you need to actually be investing and accruing your Bitcoin. So the Bitcoin bubbles, uh, or the crypto bubbles today, FTT, Ape, Rollbit, Sui, FX, Hex, XRD, uh, TWT, Ton, Rune, all smashed arbitrum down flow down all down for the day guys you can see this now guys i remember saying to you that when these are in the red that's when you need to accumulate some of them and it's very interesting right because when casper's in the red a lot of these are in the green and when these are in the the, the red then casper seems to be in the green i'm not sure why if you know why i would love to know what your thoughts are down in the comments below but as you can see ftt is the one that's being obliterated here so is what it is. We don't actually have much news ahead for today or tomorrow from the US side of things. But on Wednesday, we are about to get CPI, core CPI and course uh, CPI year on year, um, which is going to be absolutely insane. And then on top of it, we have initial jobless claims, PPI, uh, core PPI, PPI, core PPI and US retail sales plus business inventories on Thursday. So Wednesday, Thursday, the markets are going to be moving. And then on Friday, we have U.S. imports and um, consumer sentiment and Empire State Manufacturing. So there will be a lot of things happening. You need to know that next week, Wednesday, the 20th of September, we have the federal interest rate decision. I would like to know from my community what you guys think the Fed is going to do. Do you think they're going to pause? Do you think they're going to raise interest rates? Or do you think they're going to reverse interest rates? Especially because Fed, Fed um, Powell said in the last meeting that he was going to raise rates. But... He spoke about November. He didn't speak about now. Okay, so let me know what your thoughts are down below. I'd love to hear what the community thinks. And of course, then he will be speaking at that time too. So crazy stuff. Not a lot of news out here, but G20 moves forward with international crypto framework. So they are looking at what is going on, um, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, another thing here that you guys just need to be very uh, careful of is Vitalik Buterin's X account was hacked. 
and over 691k has been drained from other victims wallets so please be very very cautious do not click on links you don't know do not click on people stuff you do not know only you no matter how frustrating and how boring and tiring it can be for you rather do your research so that you too don't lose seven hundred thousand dollars like you wouldn't want to lose not even a thousand dollars, not even five, not even a hundred dollars. You wouldn't want to lose from a scam. So make sure to do your due diligence and check out the important bits of those information. So we can wrap. SPF's internet sucks. BlackRock denies Voyager. Buy and more. Okay, so basically SPF uh, is on dial-up internet, and uh, you can see here from the letter that was uh, put through from Judge Kaplan. As we fear, the current plan does not work in practice and Mr. Bankman's Freed is not, in fact, getting access to an internet-enabled laptop, which is great because who knows the capabilities of what that man can do um, from anywhere. And essentially, that man should not be on a laptop at all because what can he do to many, many crypto projects and things? So by 1 p.m. or one and a half uh, hours later, Mr. Freed was only able to load one document from the database to review. Effectively, Mr. Bank Bankman Freed had no access to the internet for the entire five hour period. BlackRock's purchase of Voyager was one big lie. Asset management giant uh, BlackRock has denied buying bankrupt crypto brokerage firm Voyager Digital, despite a widely shared press release stating otherwise. A fake press release syndicated to the Associated Press claimed that BlackRock planned to acquire Voyager Digital, uh, citing industry banners. So I actually want to ask my community. So this is despite a widely shared press release stating otherwise. Now, this is very interesting, would you not say? Because why would there be an insane press release all about BlackRock, the biggest asset management company in the world, buying one of the most broken crypto um, uh, companies why on earth would there be so much news about it if it wasn't out there and if blackrock controls part heavy parts of the media why would that come out is my question to you um you know so this is the news fun or is it actually a whole bunch of pull the wool over our eyes because of whatever reasons you know that I dare not say on the channel so I don't get banned, okay? Um, but at the end of the day, guys, if BlackRock was going to buy Voyager, they would have said it, they would have done it, they would have made the news, they would have agreed to this, they would have made some noise. I don't know why, if there's a secret, if they have bought them out, if they haven't bought them out, who knows what the heck is going on here. If you guys know, then let me know down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what the community actually thinks. So remember the guy who threw 8,000 Bitcoin in the trash? Uh, James Howells is gearing up for a lawsuit against a South Wales council over its refusal to let him try to dig up and find a hard drive he threw out over 10 years ago containing 8,000 Bitcoin. So if he can never get that Bitcoin back, guys, out of the 21 million Bitcoin, that's 8,000 of it already gone. Cheers. Bye-bye. Okay, so very, very interesting. Someone pays 500,000 in Bitcoin fees. So I can't figure out how this happened. It makes absolutely no sense. It's not deliberate payment to the mining pool since meme pool's block audit shows that the transaction was broadcast openly for anyone to mine. So who knows what's going on there, guys. But as you can see, there's not that much crazy news in the market. Um, so not much to report back to my community about. But the DOJ claims about Sam Bankman Fried's laptops access are in accurate defense alleges. I don't know why this guy is getting so much news again in the space, but this is the article that I wanted to show you. And I'll leave the TA for a little bit later towards the end of this video. We're almost done. Uh, so thanks for being here with me on the Crypto Bliss community. I really appreciate it. So before I read that last article to you, please make sure if you are watching this video and have not subscribed to the channel that you subscribe to the channel immediately. That would be truly and gratefully appreciated from my community. And if you're watching, I would love to see 10 likes on the video minimum. Come on, guys. Let's get this. Um, before the Federal Reserve speaks next week, I challenge the Crypto Bliss community to get this channel up to 1,000 subscribers. Can we do it? 
Let me know down in the comments below, guys, and make sure to subscribe. Last article. So Bitcoin halving is nice, but kickstarting the bull run requires fiat money supply. So while bulls point to next year's halving as a bull catalyst, any sizable uptrend is likely contingent on major central banks boosting their year-on-year -year M2 money supply growth, okay, which is what the past data is showing. So you can see here, Bitcoin's four-year performance cycles. 2011, Bitcoin did 1,474%. 2012, 186%. 2013, 5,537%. That's its highest gain ever in 2013. And I think that this bull cycle now in 2023, a decade later, is going to do the exact same thing as what it did. It may not do 5,000%, but I'm telling you, it's going to be big. Okay. 2014, guess what? Boom, smashed down 58%. 2015, only up 34% from that minus there. 2016, 125. 2017, where everybody, Carl from the moon, MM Crypto, all of these guys got in. I mean, Da Vinci got in here. No wonder Da Vinci is extremely wealthy. But so is Carl from the moon and, and some of the other guys in the crypto space, guys, because they got in here and they made killer gains on Bitcoin alone. Okay, let alone all the other major cryptos that they invested in and took some profits on. 2018, minus 74%. 2019, 94%. 2020, 308% up. 2021, 57% up. 2022, minus 65%. And right now for 2023, we'll have to wait until the end of the year to see. So the magnitude of expected halving led uptrend has been and will continue to be likely contingent on major central banks. US Fed, European Central Bank, Bank of uh, Japan, uh, the BOJ, and the People's Bank of China, boosting their year-on-year -year M2 money supply rates. So the aggregate M2 of four major central banks represent the total value of their respective fiat currency circulating in the market. Now, I want to go and show you something in this article, guys. So you can see here when Bitcoin started pumping, 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 the money supply only started increasing from here. And look what happened. So people were ejecting. And then guess what happened? From here, the market started to insane rally while the M2 supply increased. Then when it started to decrease or they paused and decreased again, guess what? It slowed down until they started increasing again. And guess what? At this point, when they started increase, increasing, guess what happened? A major bull cycle, right? Would you agree with that? Let me know down in the comments below. And then again, a major dip in the market. Guess what? Trapped price. But once this started to go from here, it started to make pumps to the upside. And then lastly, what do you think? We're in that low time right now. We've slowed down the M2 supply. The M2 supply is starting to increase once again. Okay, starting to look a little bit like this, this kind of area. Okay. Once we see that start to pump up anything like this or like this, guys, what do you think Bitcoin is going to do? Bitcoin is going to annihilate. And look at this. Every single time money supply beats the previous high. So what do you think they're going to have to do this time to get the money supply to somewhere around this level, guys? They are going. So look at this. This was the exact candle that told you to start to sell, right? Would you agree with that? Well, come on, guys. The signs are obvious. Now, thanks for liking the page. Thanks for being here with me. Let's go and quickly squiz at the Dixie. The Dixie on the daily has now made a new high. Okay, so it broke this high. It's now higher than that high. But like I wanted to say to you, reversal. And guess what? Look how perfect my, my um, uh, green line was hit here with this reversal pattern. And now we're making our way back down. So the likelihood is probably something like that. You know, which makes the Bitcoin uh, story a little bit better, which says that we could end up and essentially going up for a little bit of a long, a, a, a long on the Bitcoin price. So I'm not too sure, guys, that Bitcoin will fall, but I'm no genie in a bottle. And if we have to go and look at the Nasdaq, the Nasdaq is kind of pulling its way down as well. If we can, we kind of closing this gap. Gap. If we can hold support above the 50 and break once again this level. That will be very, very bullish from the markets. Now, guys, we have been told that we are in a recession for a number of months. And I mean, I think I've heard a recession since last year. I've been hearing recession for a long time. So 
there is a lot of information out there to say that maybe there is a recession on the loom. But you can see here when Bitcoin does this, this move here looks very, very similar to this move here, making lower lows, lower highs. But then guess what? A reversal candle. I mean, look at this candle. This candle even closed in volume and its body underneath all of this zone. Very similar stuff is happening over here at the moment. And as you can see, there's a huge reversal candle here. So what is this? Do we get do we get some sort of reversal where we wick down, boom, even smack these lows of these candles? Or do we wick lower and immediately pull back up? I would like to know what you guys think. But as you guys can see, we're trading in this tight range of crazy, I mean, it's like a few hundred dollars, guys, um, between these two white boxes here. And if we do find support, you can see there that my inverse head and shoulders pattern could end up playing out. So if we do essentially get up here above this box and we don't get the cross, okay, that'll be very, very, very good. But I want to say to you that within the next two to three days, without a doubt, if this thing, if we still sit in this area, this cross is going to happen and we might start to see a little bit more selling pressure. Now, we all know that FTX are about to offload some of the crypto a couple billion worth of their crypto and they have limited it to about 200 million uh, sale per week so it's not enough to make the market drop guys especially when trading volume is 27 billion forget 200 million 200 million is not going to do much especially if they offloading like six different cryptocurrencies of that 200 to make up that 200 million at a time guys it does not make sense that is not going to crash the price i do not believe that for a moment it can make it move, but it's not going to crash it. Okay. So the same thing here right now um, with Ethereum. Ethereum has unfortunately had its cross right here, um, which is a death cross essentially. So Ethereum does look like it wants to sit here, maybe pull back down to this level and then bounce off of that level, guys. But you can see the RSI on both Bitcoin and Ethereum are really just telling us Yes, maybe there's a bit of a tiny bit of downward pressure for now, but we will see some strong moves to the um, to the upside very soon. Now, oil, okay, one of the leading indicators of the entire world's economy is busy breaking out of its move. It's found some support here, and it seems as though we might be wanting to make a move, possibly up to the ninety-five. Well, first of all, up here first, the ninety-two dollar. Then the 95, kind of the 90, yeah, $97. And then this level up here, which is $106 per barrel. I would like to know what you guys think about that. Thank you for being here with me today. I hope you guys enjoyed the Crypto Bliss channel today. Let me know down in the comments below if you did. And really appreciate you. Please make sure that you hit in the description in the comments below my Bitflex, um, my Bitflex trading link. That is going to give you some incredible bonuses just for you. And you guys can go ahead and trade these cryptocurrencies with me. I am still in my long position on Bybit. You can also see my Bybit link down below and get yourself some crazy deposit bonuses down there. But I want to say to you guys one last thing. and I want to leave you with this. If you and I trade together and we think alike, do you think the market is going to move that exact same way? Possibly. But that's why. The fear and greed index, our fear as a community across the world in global markets controls this. And that's why you need to keep your emotions in check. And you need to know when you're trading using my link down below that you're either just averaging into your position for a long or you're averaging into your position for a short. Super simple, guys. Really, really simple. Thanks for being here with me once again. Appreciate it. You have a beautiful Monday and start to the strong. Love you lots. And we'll see you on the next one. Make sure to watch this one because this one was crazier than this one. Thanks, guys.